our guest, uh, Daniel Sotif. You won't escape that. Um, because it's a pleasure to have him with us tonight and this week with the band. Uh, he has been a, he's a philosopher, he has been a music critic for a long, long time in France, in Jazz Magazine or in Liberation, the newspaper Liberation. And, uh, but he's also an art curator. A few years ago, uh, he created a show in the Museum of Quai about jazz uh, and all the causes and consequences of this music on the art world and not just the art world over the 20th century. And he has just done uh, last year another great exhibition, a terrific one, I should say, on many different levels and layers called The Color Line about African-American uh, visual artists from the Civil War to now, including a lot of uh, Chicago painters and sculptors uh, over the last 100 years. Uh, but he's a great music connoisseur. So I will, uh, he's been touring with the band because he's, had, he's, had, he's a philosopher, meaning he's an adventurer too. So he's been with us, with us every single day, every single morning and every single night for the last week. Uh, so he has started to know the musicians as much as we do. So that's why we thought it would be a nice idea uh, to invite him as a moderator. Daniel? Thanks, Sam. Um, I'm very honored to be here and to be with those musicians. Uh, you know, after that week, I don't know what I will do next week. <laughs> because now, uh, each day uh, has been a new musical experience with this person. It has been really something incredible. And uh, uh, I've been very impressed because uh, I understood living with them that never rehearse. And uh, it's kind of mystery. Uh, they are normal person in the, during the day, uh, talking, uh, <laughs> doing normal things. Uh, uh, eating, uh, traveling, uh, being in a car, sleeping, uh, and they never rehearse. And I, I was not listening all the time, but uh, they never even talk about what they will do uh, when they, maybe they do that uh, in some situation that I don't see, or maybe they are hiding, I don't know, they are hiding their organization. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's, to me it has been a really big surprise because uh, I had always, I, have a certain experience about uh, improvised music, but uh, uh, normally uh, the musicians that I met before, I always saw them uh, uh, preparing, thinking, eventually uh, rehearsing, and uh, uh, in that case, no, it's absolutely just the continuity of life. Uh, I, I, I have really that sensation, but at a certain point, it's the life which becomes music. And uh, uh, it starts, uh, and I don't know if they even decide who starts. Uh, if just uh, the first one that uh, uh, make a sound, and the other are following. And it's really incredible because uh, uh, this evening, for instance, it was an incredible concert. I don't know uh, what was the sensation, but uh, uh, to me, I should confess, it was, it was this evening the best, maybe also because the quality of the sound, the quality of the audience. Uh, uh, but it was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I made a joke. So. <laughs> okay. uh, because I saw them also in not very easy situation. Uh, the first day, the day I arrived, uh, they were playing in a circumstance which was not very easy for the musician, and uh, you know, a, a mix of food, mundanity, and uh, music, and so. Uh, uh, for them, I can imagine that uh, it was continuity of life, but you know, life is not always okay. <laughs> <laughs> but this evening, it was really fantastic. And, uh, you know, I was thinking all the time, this is sounding like perfect composed music, you know. Uh, but in fact, I'm sure, I, I've seen it, I've experienced it, it was completely improvised. So it's a kind of mystery for me. And uh, I don't know, uh, who of you uh, uh, can uh, explain a little bit that mystery? How you produce uh, that incredible effect? Uh, uh, produce music, which is music, fantastically uh, high quality music, and it sounds exactly uh, like a, a very strong composition. This evening was evident. Well, maybe I could start. How's everybody doing, first of all? We haven't really spoken to you. We've spoken to you through music, but we haven't <laughs> communicated with you. We're really thankful that you're here. Uh, it's, it's interesting that you could think that, that this was one of, 
know, made perhaps the, the best evening that we've had so far. And that's probably because of a uh, conversation that, that Mankwe uh, started, um, a conversation that she initiated with all of us beforehand. And whether she meant to do so or not, she, she planted a seed in all of our minds that encouraged uh, us to listen more critically. And, and to really invest in the idea of saying yes to someone else's ideas and to really do all that we could to follow the strongest idea that was happening on the bandstand and to solidify our concept around that strong idea. So essentially when you're hearing something that's compositional, that's, those are the, the bullet points of what we're trying to do. First, we identify a strong idea that's coming from someone in the ensemble. So that may be the first thing that's stated. It could just be something that materializes after a moment. And then something comes to the forefront. It could be a narrative element. It could be uh, a rhythmic or melodic motif, something that's repeated, so just, just some nugget. And we say that's, that's the strong idea. And then the second bullet point is to coalesce around that strong idea, to do something that is going to be not only complementary to that idea, but something that's going to contribute to the ongoing conversation. And so saying yes, constantly validating that strong idea and putting something with that strong idea and saying something that layers that strong idea and if there's a narrative element to be in a conversation with that narrative element, to play something and to, to recognize and to really listen closely to what the lyrics are about. So if they're about economy and they're about these different ways of thinking about economy and, and ownership and license and privilege and appropriation, if there's ways of thinking about those different things and we try to play something musical that localizes what that means. And so, that's, that's probably what you heard. And so when Mankwe brought that up, let's try to do that. And so I immediately shut that down. I said, I've been doing that the whole time. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. I've been doing that the whole time. So she said, oh, okay, well, uh, maybe if we could just all kind of do that a little bit more, right? And so, and then that was it. And we, we had dinner, and that, that was the end of the conversation. But she knew what she was doing. Right? So then we all just sort of went away to our little corners of this big table, and we thought, okay, how do we do that? So if that wasn't evident for the past you know, 10 days, then how do we make that more evident in our performance? How do we, if we think that we've been following a strong idea and playing something that complements that idea, then how do we do that even more? And so that, that's what you probably heard this evening. I know that's what I was doing. I was thinking yeah. about that, so. Probably. Yeah, probably. There were also moments during the week, there were moments that for me uh, was, were easier to identify. For instance, uh, the night at the Elastic, at a certain point, the music became, uh, uh, I don't want to say the word real jazz, but uh, <laughs> there were swinging moments and that there were, you know, something uh, mm -hmm. I, I could recognize the rules. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And uh, that was also okay, uh, but uh, uh, it sounded like easier than the music that you played this evening, for instance. For, for me, the music this evening was completely uh, like a beautiful composition, mm -hmm. different movements, and uh, uh, with no uh, direct relationship with the normal rule of uh, bebop or, you know. And uh, uh, that's really, uh, that uh, uh, up openness, uh, the temperature is really incredible. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I guess I never had this kind of experience. No, well, <laughs> neither have voice music. <laughs> 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 exactly. And there is also a point, something which is, uh, the experience, because it's also the bridge experience. I mean, uh, you are American musician, and Sylvain, uh, Mike is uh, half, he's not half French, half American. T -t 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 maybe we'll become French, or I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's also uh, it's working on uh, but, uh, uh, Sylvain, Sylvain is a French musician that I know since long, really, yes. And uh, that also is something, because uh, 
uh, there is no uh, uh, trace of, there is no difference. I mean, uh, if you close your eyes, you don't see uh, uh, French, uh, uh, American, black, white, nothing of this kind. It's just uh, people uh, in a conversation or something of this kind. Yeah. And, uh, but the conversation, you know, life is improvisation. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but when this improvisation becomes music, if it's good, it can be also become a, com a composition because it, it's recorded mm -hmm. and so it may stay. Mm -hmm. and, uh, normally, uh, we are not recording our, our life. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, well, in this modern age, we're recording. We're yeah. recording yeah. every moment, yes. right? We are recording everything, but yeah. uh, we are not recording with the same ID. Uh, we not the project of a work, yeah. of a, an artwork. Mm -hmm. And that's maybe another question. You're living, and at a certain point, you're starting to create something which can become an incredible artwork. And uh, uh, it's a kind of step. And uh, how uh, do you feel that's the right moment of that step? You want to lay on it? I mean, part of it, going back to, 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 going back to uh, rehearsing, you see, being, everyone here is rehearsing all the time. And so and then you bring all you bring your entire repertoire with you when you get here, you know. Um, and then I think it's interesting because part of your your observation I think is very European, and just I know from living there this idea of if you close your eyes you would be able to hear the difference from people, whereas I think Americans is as racist and difficult and insane as we are. We also know that if you close your eyes you're not going to be able to tell who did what in that we acknowledge there's, that there is a spontaneity that exists, mm -hmm. um, which is very different from a school where there's, I've found work in Europe where there's a lot of intention all the time. Uh, and I think, uh, not to get too much into the differences between the two, because of course in many ways they're not, but there is this, this uh, availability of spontaneity that is inherent here. Um, and and uh, also this, there's there's less expectations that you're going to stay in your category, which means that you can then bring whatever you want to the table at any time, and that's something that's already understood is going to happen even before you get to a scenario like this. Um, and so I, I think that that's one of the things that makes a difference. So that even the idea of of improvisation becomes less novel. I don't think it happens any less in Europe at all. I mean, if you walk any street in any city there, you can clearly see improvisation, because goddamn, there's not a single grid in the whole damn <laughs> continent. You know, that's improvisation. Um, you know, some of those streets are made by cattle, and that's real improvisation. Yeah, that's high art. You know, as, soon as, as soon as you let your livestock decide where you're going to go, that's, you know. But, uh, <clears throat> Um, but there is a different, I think, uh, way of certainly integrating spontaneity into, into art and into labor here. Mm -hmm. And part of that's also, in, and into genocide, and, in, and you know, into destruction, you know. Um, it's, but that, that, that hair trigger reality of, 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 of this country that we come from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You said we were normal people, that is not really sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is sure is we are really different and we come from different area and that's the strength of this band because uh, we, we listen to, to the other, listening to some different world and world and so we have to take care of that. Yeah. Be conscious of that and it's one of the, one of the part is the difference every four people that make the, the band. Um, I think the other thing that I want to say is um, that it is rooted in a black American tradition. Everything, almost everything that happened on the stage is rooted in that. In the sense that even with Sylvain, the freedom um, that creative music brought to, that black American musicians brought to France, even encouraging the, the seeking of freedom 
is a very particular seeking that is an ongoing thing for black American people um, that generated the idea of this freedom within, and this freedom of conversation, this freedom of texture, this freedom of play and of invention and reinvention, self-invention, self-discovery through self-invention. Um, so while we may be able to close our eyes and not necessarily know who, like the color of who is doing what, um, the story, the texture, um, and even and the forms uh, are primarily rooted in, in, in black and, and, and the continually changing and yet pulling the history along with us of, um, of black people and black music here. You, you I, I believe your initial question was this, this idea of, at least the way that I'm going to paraphrase, the notion of becoming, the, the idea of genius coming out of, some, out of life, mm -hmm. right? this, this idea of composition, of creation coming through this seemingly disconnected progression of events and circumstances and musical elements and then composition and form emerges. Well, I think at the root of that is language. Mm -hmm. And that the language that we're utilizing, uh, we've codified and made it a universal norm between the four of us. Mm -hmm. And that we're, much like we see in the world, we're, we're adding new words to that lexicon. <laughs> we're adding new variables and new ways to conjugate. And, we're doing that every time we perform. And through that language, that shared way of communicating, that's the way that we, you know, something, that genius emerges from that shared language. But it's more mysterious than it was uh, uh, when you had, uh, uh, in the jazz of the past, when you had bebop, when you have a, uh, a theme when you add uh, chords. Yeah, I, I, I think I think one of, one of the one of the challenges, and this is something as an educator, I uh, I I don't want to say constantly because that sounds too superlative. I oft I often find myself saying to my students that what we just played is not really different from other ways of making music that's improvisational. It it. There is a continuum. There is something that is very much the same as the way that Jelly Roll Morton organized music for his ensemble, the way that Duke Ellington organized music for his ensemble, the way that Mary Lou Williams organized music for her ensembles. It, there is something that is very much the same with what we're doing. There, there, are, there are themes that Mankwe has been exploring mm -hmm. every night. There are themes that, that Mike has come back to, stories and ideas and a concept, whether it be about history or military history or you know, race relations, or just any type of story. There are things that, you know, when, when Sylvan picks up two instruments and the way that he expresses himself with those instruments or the way that he's used a lot, utilizing electronics, they, they are, are, these are things that we gravitate toward. That, that are recurring. And so through that, we, we identify form. We identify these units of memory. Like, oh, that's a thing that we worked on last night. Or that was a thing that we did two weeks ago. Or, oh, I did listen to track five on the recording from three years ago, and, and here is an element from there. Or I remember when I did the mallet thing, and they said, oh yeah, that mallet thing. So there's, again, that, that language that we've developed with each other People think, a lot of people think that jazz is this off the cuff, spontaneous thing that never happens. No, it's like the things that we practice, and now we're trying to figure out how to play them without trying to figure out how to play them, <laughs> right? That's, so that's what, that's what improvisation is. Improvisation, like you just said, is all the stuff we practiced, and that we hope that in a nanosecond, we'll say those things. It's like conversation. It's like any other language. You practice, you read, you digest, you process, 
and you hope that when the moment comes for you to actually say those things with meaning, you can say them. And not get in your own and, and not get in your own way. Absolutely. Because part of the other piece of being a creative person, whether you're a musician, a writer, a painter, is to not interrupt the stroke, right? If you're talking about stroke on the page, to not be like, oh, maybe that's not good enough, or oh, maybe that's in the wrong spot. So like, your brain can get in the way um, before you have a chance to actually get the inspiration, get the movement out, get the, the shape out. So I know that in improvisation, definitely that is a big part of it. Mm -hmm. Mike talks a lot about the, the dual sort of politeness or listening to each other and pushing yourself to be fearless so that when something does come, take it and make a definite choice. Making Because every single moment that we're on stage, just like every single moment of life, but we're making choices. And sometimes that choice, you think you're going in this direction, it's like, no, oh, I'm gonna go in this direction now. Or sometimes you just decide to zig back and forth for a while because that is productive or um, lends a, a support or lends a color that seems to, that works in what you're hearing. Um, but just like, I guess, back my basic point is that not getting in your own way, not thinking too much, um, and at the same time, making choices. I understand what you said, but as a listener, mm -hmm. uh, it's anyway. I I think it's it's a different experience because I had the experience in the past, for instance, uh, listening for the same group uh, two days, three days in a festival. I remember, for instance, uh, listening uh, like three or four concerts of by the Gillivans Big Band, sure. uh, and that was a very strange Big Band because. Uh, uh, they were changing each evening, right. but they were um, uh, playing more or less the same tune. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the listener, you had uh, a kind of uh, situation that you could recognize. Uh, yeah. And uh, you, uh, you could think, ah, oh, they are doing it like this this evening, or you could think, ah, uh, uh, oh, they are playing this tune first and this one. Sure. Uh, and uh, you could feel uh, if they were uh, in a bad evening or a good evening, and because you had all those sensations that you, it, you, it was easier to organize your sure. own experience as a listener. Yeah. And I, I followed the group now yeah. one complete week or yeah. more or less, sure. and uh, I know um, much more about each of you. Uh, I, I, I can uh, imagine what will happen in a way uh, coming from. Uh, uh, Mark Way or from Mike, Mike or from you, but I'm su much more surprised anyway. Yeah, I, I, see, yeah, I, see I, I guess. I mean? Yeah, because I don't want to. I don't. Yeah, the only sure. experience that I had in the past that was maybe similar. In the past, I was uh, friend with Cecil Taylor, mm -hmm. yeah, and when I was directing a, a museum in Italy, he came and he stayed like three or four days playing in one of the rooms of the museum, and it was rehearsing. That sh that can be. But he was never playing uh, the, the evening, what he had with us. Yeah, sure. And, you know, <laughs> not surprising. And, uh, and so it's, it was, in a way, an experience of the same kind of the yeah. one that I had with you this week. Yeah. But um, uh, I followed also a, a classic bebop group, and uh, they could be excellent. Uh, yeah, sure. But uh, yeah. Uh, it was not as disturbing for the <laughs> listener as uh, you are. are. you disturbing? <laughs> You know, I, 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 in no way I don't want, I don't want to marginalize your experience, right? You know, I, I, I certainly... When I say disturbing, I don't mean... Uh, it was a fantastic experience, it was a pleasure, uh, because uh, you were surprised all the time. And even if you... Uh, now uh, I, I know what uh, Mokwe can do. Uh, you know, at the beginning I had no precise idea, but she's always doing something else. <laughs> you see? And uh, uh, Mike, he, you know, sometimes it's not, uh, as, it's not as big a pleasure. For instance, to tell the truth, uh, the concert in the promontory was the, the one that I really uh, appreciate less uh, than the other. Uh, yeah. I don't know what you feel, what you felt, but, uh, uh, and this one this evening was really fantastic from the beginning to the end. But anyway, uh, good or excellent, a little less good, 
it's always a surprise. Mm -hmm. You see, he's not the man I love playing each evening. Yeah, yeah right, sure. Yeah, yeah. and so yeah, that, that, that's certainly true. And, you know, I know that you, you have an ear for these things because that, that is one of the things that happened at Elastic when, you know, when we were playing with Clark and Nick. You know, it had those moments of conventional, you know, like it swings and it was, you know, out of a particular, like what we said, it was like an Ornette Coleman sort of time, no changes. Yeah, you, so you can pinpoint when something is following a, a more mainstream or easily identified where you know what the rules are. Oh, there's going to be a solo, there's going to be chord changes. There, well, yeah, obviously we weren't doing that, right? So, yeah, in that sense, we, we don't have, we don't know what we're gonna do. If you know you're going to play the man I love in a certain key, you know what you're going to do. Yeah. You're coming into it with some known knowns for Rumsfeld being famous. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're, and so what we what we have are unknown knowns, and we have some unknown unknowns, <laughs> right? Yeah, okay. I had to go there because I figured we could all understand that, right? Yeah. So, so in that sense, right? You know, if you're playing bebop. The only thing that you don't really know is if someone's going to go off the grid of, of what's yeah, supposed to be there. And then you have to like, oh, we, we're going there. We have to do this. Every time we play, we, we don't know what's going to happen. And that, that, that pause at the beginning is us deciding, well, did I, did I start the last number? Am I always starting? Well, this is what's going in my mind. Am I, am I the one that's always starting this? Maybe, maybe I should wait. Okay, I started the last number, so I shouldn't start now. But that's really important yeah. because it right. definitely changes the texture. Right. And I think the fact that we do let each other, because we know that whoever does start it. Really yeah, we're going to say, is that is that going to be strong? Or is the thing that's going to contribute to that going to be strong? And that's always a hallmark of this particular group, right. is that we're, we are conscious of like everyone, everyone's excellence, first of all. And so, knowing that it's critical and imperative for each time we play together for everyone to have their space so that it can have the texture of us. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I would agree with you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some other folks want to say something? Yeah. yeah. I, I just want to say, uh, for, hello. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say for the, uh, us listeners, that's the exciting thing about imp improvised music is that you guys don't know exactly you know, how you're going to present it. And uh, of course, we have no idea what you're going to pre present it. And that's what makes you know, improvised music so absolutely exciting. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, a lot, you'll hear classical music, certain numbers around about midnight. You know what to expect. This, you have no idea quite what you might want to do. And, and of course, we don't. And that's why we're here. Well, thank you. Thank you, very much. you sort of touched on the fact that there is no language per se to describe what you do. We just use English or French to sort of talk about what you're doing. Do you feel that you're in the process of developing a specific language, like a chore choreography language of what you do? Well, Brent Edwards, uh, <laughs> different, different take on yeah. that. But, uh, Mike, you please. Oh, yeah. sorry. No, I just made a quip about. Yeah, no, no, we'll, we'll just say, I mean, <laughs> yes, I think, short answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. But it's also interesting the, 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 the way people in the past have used established languages. You know, and like that's why Brent Edwards came to mind because of his, when he looks at how uh, Louis Armstrong used to write. And how he would write about it, you know, if you read his journals, it's almost like he's trying to maneuver English into the language that he's already speaking, you know, and he invents. So that what also interests me too is not just this amorphous language um, that, that may become more and more solid, but also the, the established tools that we get to throw in and out as well. You know, I, and yeah, it makes perfect sense because, you know, I'll often, I, I, I'm fortunate enough to play in a lot of different arenas where I, I need to bring different elements of history to the fore. 
And so what that means is that when I'm in a situation like this, I'm trying to do my best to not second guess what I'm playing. And what that means is sometimes I'll play something that sounds to me very bebop-like. And I'll not want to throw that away. Even though I would think, some, some would think, well, that's pretty conventional. That seems out of place. And I don't want it to feel that way to me. Because if it feels that way to me, then it's out of place. Right? And so, in essence, what I'm trying to do is, is find spaces to use words that are coming, they're all in a dictionary. I want to use the whole dictionary when we're playing. I don't want to just like use the end with the hard words, the challenging words, the polysyllabic words. I want to use every word in the dictionary. And so in doing that, like you said, this new language can emerge from just within the group. Right? But we're not, we're not abandoning other, other tongues. Yeah, I'd say like for me personally, in the moment, my Latin is a backbeat. Mm -hmm. right, right, right. Like I'm right. still, that's exactly. always in my mind. Right. No matter what, right. and that, that's what is going to make it make sense for me. Yeah, mine is Max Roach. It's, you know, so, I, so there's going to be some, some foundational element that may define who we are, but we're not anchored to that. We're not anchored to that system. And I know for me too, um, I'm trying not to do too much repeating of myself. Like, I want to be able to use the language, but in a slightly different way. Like, I don't want to, I, I, I want to work my strengths, but find a different twist to it, or find a different angle to it, or come at it through the window instead of the door, or as much as I can. Yeah, but you can't, you can't run from yourself, right? No. So no, if it's Mary and Makeva, then and if, if, that's, that's, if yeah. that's a thing, well, I'm yeah. like, okay, that's a thing. If it's Abby Lincoln, yeah. you know, that's a thing. And yeah, those so I'm things. hearing those things, and so, <laughs> like, so then I'm like, okay, then here's the thing for that. You know? yeah. So yeah. You, we can't run from the, sure. the things that define our identity, the people that we've been influenced and taught by. And, and he's one of my big teachers, Lori Carlos, was also like, don't just play your greatest hit. Hey everyone, my name is Kate Rutha. I'm the University Arts Engagement Coordinator, manager here at the Logan Center for the Arts. Um, thank you so much for coming out on such a cold, snowy evening. Um, we're so happy to have you here. Welcome <laughs> to the Logan Center if this is your first time. We're a multidisciplinary hub for the vibrant art scene at U Chicago. Chicago at large and beyond. Um, we just turned five, which is very exciting. And since 2012, we've had the privilege of welcoming to our stages some of the greatest musicians. And we really hope that the Logan Center is becoming an important home for jazz on the south side of Chicago. We have lots of incredible opportunities to see jazz throughout the year. So please sign up for our mailing list if you're not already on it. It's right outside. And also pick up a year-long calendar of all of the many partnerships and events that we have happening here all year long. And if you're like me and you not only love jazz, but you love visual arts and theater and film, pick up this. It's got everything happening um, on campus for the fall. But we're here tonight with an amazing performance organized and with the support of The Bridge, the France Chicago Center, the Center for the Study of Race, Politics and Culture, the Julie and Parker Hall Endowment for Jazz and American Music, the Department of Music, the Frankie Institute for the Humanities, the Reva and David Logan Center for the Arts, and Experimental Sound Studio. And to in introduce the incredible musicians and to talk more about all of the great work that The Bridge is doing, I'd like to welcome Executive Director of The Bridge, Alexandre Pierre Point. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, uh, uh, every person, every people, every sender uh, who's supporting The Bridge, who has been supporting The Bridge. We are nearly as old as the Logan Art Center in four years. Yeah. Uh, so we, we are the young brother. Um, so you heard already about this network, again, the bridge. I always uh, make sure to mention the fact it's not the name of the ensemble you're gonna hear tonight. 
every ensemble is unique and every ensemble has its own identity and its own name. Sometimes they have changing names as well, like this one, I'll tell you more in a second about it. I just wanted to mention, since uh, we are on the south side of Chicago, there's something I wanted to do uh, 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 for the last few days. I was just waiting to be at the Logan Art Center. Probably a lot of you have heard about the passing of uh, Mr. Richard, Muel Richard Abrams a few days ago, and I would say that among many, many, many consequences of his life, work, and action, uh, the bridge is just one of them, just one of them. Uh, I first came to Chicago, we were talking about that with Mankwe just a minute ago. I first came to Chicago 17 years ago as a, a young ethnographer. Uh, also because of thanks to Muel Richard Abrams because I did my PhD on the ACM. And to make a long story short, I fell in love with the city, not just his musicians, it's musicians, but it's people, and it's different neighborhoods, and that's all step by step, a little later along the way. Uh, we had the idea of, to create uh, the bridge. Uh, so I feel it's only, uh, it's only fair to, uh, to acknowledge uh, the importance of Muir Richard Abrams, not just for our network, but for so many people, creative people, individuals, as he used to say, uh, uh, in Chicago and in many other places, in fact. Um, the band you're gonna hear tonight, is, this is their second leg, so you have CDs there that they recorded when they started. Uh, if we are a French-American uh, Chicagoan uh, organization, it's because we travel with the musicians in France or in Chicago and the Midwest, a little further, a little around. Uh, there, so when a band starts in Chicago, it means, of course, they will tour a little later uh, in France. This one band are started in France, so this is their second leg now in Chicago. They started uh, with a tour of France in October 2015. This was the ninth bridge. At that time, they were known with that name. A little later, they were known as Epiphany, but now they have got a new name until the next one. It's the Transatlantic Amazon Goats. So please <laughs> welcome Mankwe and Dosi on vocals, electronics, poetry, imagination, visions, all kinds of things. <laughs> Clarinets, Chalumeau and Electronics, Mr. Sylvain Cassat. Uh, please welcome on words, visions and virus, Mr. Mike Ladd. I think you know quite well because he works also in a different university in Chicago, DePaul University, Mr. Dana Hall on drums. of value. Do you remember how it feels to be valued? Take a moment. Remember or imagine you're just right. Not needing to change anything about yourself. Just enough, the perfect fit for the journey ahead of you. Remember how it feels? No man did for yourself, but not for yourself alone. Spread it aside till they. You gotta feel it and bring it home. You gotta feel it and bring it home. Now breathe.
Oh, wait. 